the Winds of Winter on its way, the David Gemmell winners will east, and Wizards of the Coasts go beyond Dungeons and Dragons. <laughs> Hello and welcome to the Fancy News Show from the Bottled Imp. My name is Ken Boiter and this is your weekly fix, yes, you've guessed it, of fantasy goodness. We do have some sad news to begin with. Deborah Watling, who played Doctor Who companion Victoria, has died of lung cancer. She was aged 69. She was born into a British acting dynasty. Her father, Jack Watling, was a prolific stage and film actor. And her mother, Patricia Hicks, was an experienced stage actor who gave up the business to raise her family. The actress will be best remembered for playing Victoria alongside Patrick Troughton's second Doctor. During her time in the part, which was 1967 to 1968, she, um, her foes included the Daleks, Cybermen, Ice Warriors and Yeti, so a lot of the classic Doctor Who monsters. And she starred in some of the programme's more memorable adventures. After a brief stint of owning and running a clothes boutique after coming out of Doctor Who, she then was working regularly on TV again. Shows included The Newcomers. She also played the Nymphomatic... No, Nymphomatic? What's that? <laughs> Nymphomaniac. Uh, Naughty Norma in a bomb disposal series called Danger UXB, which does sound fantastic. She also appeared in episodes of Doctor in Charge, Arthur and the Britons, Rising Damp, Little Lily, Accident, and she was in many stage and radio shows. She also kept ties with Doctor Who, appearing in the 1993 Children in Need charity skit Dimensions in Time, and also in the independent video Downtime, which was in 1995, and also in the 2013 BBC 50th 50th, 50th Adventure Tribute, the five-ish Doctors reboot, and many audio, which was the official ones, many audio uh, big finish Doctor Who episodes as well, and obviously our thoughts and feelings go out to her family and friends. The next Westeros novel, The Winds of Winter, is to be published, wait for it, and blimey, we have been waiting for it, in 2018. Yes, George R. R. Martin has revealed in his uh, blog post that he is months away from finishing the next Song of Ice and Fire novel, but said it could be published next year alongside another series. Martin also said that he was planning two volumes of his fake histories of the Tycarian kings from the Game of Thrones universe in a series called Fire and Blood. The first volume is scheduled for publication next year or early 2019, with a second a few more years coming. Martin has said that he's still working on Winds of Winter, which obviously for big fans of the novels will know that this has been at least five years in the making. And he is still months away, adding that how many months? Well, good question. He said that whether Winds is the first one or the first volume of Fire and Blood will be first hit the bookstores is hard to say at this juncture, but I do think, this is obviously quoting him, not necessarily me, I do think you have a Westeros book from me in 2018, and who knows, maybe two. It's like buses, isn't it? You wait ages for one and then two come along. Writing over the weekend in his blog post, Martin also revealed his story, Sons of Dragons, set in the Westeros universe as well, would feature in a new fantasy anthology, The Book of Swords, by his friend Gardner Do Dozios, and will be published in the UK by Penguin, Random House imprint, Band Bantam, in October. Hopefully that was clear. <laughs> Hey, anyway, 2017 David Gemmell Awards for Fantasy were announced at Edge Lit 6. Yes, the three awards celebrating fantasy fiction and art were inspired by legendary British fantasy author David Gemmell, whose writing career spanned over 20 years with numerous titles. And the winners have been announced, and they are... Raven Heart Award Best Fantasy Cover Art goes to... Alessandro Baldasserioni, and you know I've got that right, for Black Rift by Josh Reynolds. The Morning Star Award for Best Fantasy Debut Novel is Steal the Sky by Megan E. O'Keefe. And the Legend Best Fantasy Novel Award goes to War Beast by Gav Thorpe. 
Dungeons and Dragons Beyond launch date and pricing has been announced by Wizards of the Coast. The D&D role-playing game app lets you manage your character and your campaigns. It's all set for a full release on August the 15th. Currently the app is in beta mode and you can sign up to get access to, I think, pretty much everything now. The basic app will be free but it does include the basic rules of the 5th edition as well as the Elemental Evil Players Companion. This gets you six character slots, access to all the rules and the ability to join campaigns and retrieve content that's been shared between players. As well as the basic level, there's going to be subscription levels as well. The hero tier is $3 per month, which gets you unlimited characters and access to a wealth of homebrew content or the master tier, which is $6 a month, and allows you to share paid content with up to 12 other accounts. Sounds pretty exciting. You can sign up to the app and find out more by visiting their official website, which is www.dnd, well, dnd, I don't know, I didn't like that, dndbeyond.com. And obviously any links that I mentioned, we will put in the description of this episode. Kickstarter news, Gilmore Quest is a mythical battle game where you battle your friends with spells and monsters to compete, to complete, sorry, the Master Gilmore book. Gilmore Quest is a narrative-driven fantasy card game for up to six players with no complex rules or deck building, with a playtime between 45 and 90 minutes. The aim of the game is to battle other players using a combination of action cards and to attack other players, and you're attacking their relic cards. They're the ones that they're going to be defending with. Oh, and that must be them right now on the phone. Hello, is that a wizard? <laughs> you're a wizard hazard. Wizard hazard? <laughs> anyway, you're a wizard Harry, is what I meant to say. So, you can become the wizard king of the fancy realm Romaro, Romara, if you win the game. There's plenty packed into the box, including 211 action cards, 36 relic cards, 52 narration cards, one narrator marker, and a full colour rule book, as you'd expect. Gilmore Quest has narrative cards that also introduce round changing rules and events to keep players on their toes. The artwork does look really cool on this, and they do have a how to play video, as you'd expect, plus the rules are there. And they've also got some stretch goals to unlock too. They have reached their target and the campaign finishes on the 9th of August. Uncanny Magazine proudly presents Disabled People Destroy Science Fiction and there are, they are seeking funds for their special double issue. Disabled People Destroy Science Fiction will feature editors, writers, both solicited and unsolicited, and artists with representations from all across the sliding scale of disability. This special double, uh, double issue is a continuation of their Destroy series in which disabled members of the science fiction community will put themselves where they belong, at the centre of the story, and intend to bring forth voices, narratives and truth most important to disabled writers, editors and creators with this special issue. As well as commissioning writers, they're also going to open up slots for unsolicited submissions in early 2018. So if you are a writer that fits the category of this, then you might want to get in contact with them in early 2018 and you might get your story published as well. There's lots of pledge levels and rewards and the campaign finishes on the 25th of August. The Art of Fancy Football is a sketchbook that captures the feeling of fancy football by the artist Pedro Ramos. The Art of Fancy Football is a signed 40-page hardcover art book showcasing the sketches of artist Pedro Ramos, otherwise known as Poncho, which I particularly like, depicting all the action and thrills of American football set in a fantasy realm. There are detailed drawings of several fantasy teams as well, including dwarfs, goblins, and big guys. There you go. Plus, there's an exclusive campaign miniature, which does look really cool, of the artist's avatar which is uh, this really cool wizard like doing some sketches, so it's pretty cool. Uh, they have reached their target as well, and the campaign finishes on the 9th of August. Bottled Imp news. Rehearsals have begun for Grimace Ironblood, the stage play. Yes, 
I am excited to say that I've been working on adapting my fantasy verse storybook, The Legends of Grimace Ironblood, with a good friend and actress of mine, Vicky Holden. We started rehearsals because we thought, you know what? This could be pretty cool as a stage play because it's meant, it's poetry, it's like Beowulf, it's kind of meant to be like you're telling stories around a fireside. And she has an experience of going into schools and performing and doing workshops. So we thought, you know what? This would be a good vehicle to do that as well. So we are well underway. And believe you and me, trying to learn <laughs> lots of these verses is quite a challenge. But it's lots of fun. We're having lots of fun. So really, really enjoying that. It's all going to be, uh, hopefully, we're going to get bookings in schools of Hertfordshire. So if you're a teacher and you're watching and you're in Hertfordshire, get in touch. But that's, oh no, on this week's Friday Fantasy Show, we take a look at the graphic novel Preacher Book One. Now I've been watching the TV series, and I absolutely love it. And the very kind fantasy artist Andy Craig, who does watch The Bottle Limp as well, he thought, I know, I'll send him the comics. So I'm looking at book one. So check that out this Friday, but that's all we have time for. Thank you so much for watching. Remember, you can subscribe and share all of our content with all your friends that might be interested. Until next time, remember to keep it unreal, especially if you're a preacher.